Hello, I'm Carrie Krillman, and this is my persuasive speech on women-only public transportation. Hopefully I can convince you guys that women-only public transportation should be implemented to, into every country uh, in the world. So how often do you or someone you know have to use uh, public transportation? For me, this occurrence is not too common, so I often forget about the dangers associated with public travel. Sadly, sexual harassment and assault against women on public transportation is a common and growing crime throughout the world, our world today. According to the Huffington Post, Jeff, Jessica Valenti states, living in New York City for the past 15 years, I've lost count of the number of times I've stood packed in a subway car and had some stranger cut my butt or whisper something inappropriate in my ear. Throughout the world, women are targets on public transport systems and frequently become victims of sexual harassment or assault. Um, examples are they, are they are groped, can be sexually abused, and or raped. Countries more densely populated or having misogynistic tendencies can have an even higher rate of occurrence for these type of crimes. Many countries have created female-only public transportation systems to help ensure the comfort and safety of their female passengers. Women-only public transportation needs to be incorporated into every country's public transportation system throughout the world to reduce the number of female sexual assaults occurring on this form of transportation. So in this speech, I will first discuss a very brief history of um, some of the public transportation, or when it was first created, um, and some of the countries that have successfully implemented it. And second, we'll discuss uh, why there is a crucial need for this form of transportation. And lastly, we'll discuss why all-female public transportation is becoming controversial. So the implementation of women-only public transportation is not a new concept. It was actually introduced way back in 1874 by the Metropolitan Railway. Since then, many countries have implemented it successfully, um, such as Japan, Egypt, Indonesia, Thailand, Brazil, Malaysia, Mexico, Nepal, Russia, and India. Um, in these countries, how they go about doing this is they specifically uh, color the women passenger car carriages a different color than the men's and then they place a guard standing outside the entrance to not let the uh, to ensure that no male passengers inappropriately enter the women's only carriage uh, these gender segregated passenger cars are especially used for day and night transport on trains and have tr proved to be extremely beneficial for female passengers at night this form of transportation is being so heavily utilized in many countries, um, it's becoming extremely popular, um, so popular that in a lot of these countries, the public transport services are branching out into other forms, and they're starting to have bus services that are all female, and as well as taxi services. Um, excuse me. Why is um, there such a need for this female-only type of transportation? Because countries like Japan, for example, are so densely populated, people are often forced to use public transportation to navigate their daily life. According to Amy Dunkel Greglia, women are often responsible for child transportation, shopping, and working a part-time job, which causes them to have to commute two hours longer on average per day than men. So Tokyo decided to employ the use of all female train carriages due to years of women complaining about men inappropriately touching them on the public transit systems. According to The Guardian, two-thirds of Japanese women have been molested on the Tokyo commuter trains, and one in, one in three women report that they use women-only carriages to avoid being groped. This made Tokyo the first city to implement women-only transport cars on their trains. This type of transport continues to gain great popularity in Tokyo, and they are, the city is contemplating implementing even more of these female-only passenger cars to their trains to help meet the rapidly growing demand for them. Also in 2014, the country of Thailand uh, implemented women-only passenger carriages uh, because uh, the year prior, a 13-year-old female passenger was raped and murdered on an overnight train. 
So countries that provide this type of transportation for women are simply reducing the number of opportunities for male perpetrators to assault females during their commute. The women-only compartments are providing a more peaceful and secure environment for the women to travel in. Women are allowed to let their guard down and are guaranteed safety during their commute. The form, this form of travel is reducing psychological stress and a fear of public travel for females. Why is this form of transport controversial? Feminist groups argue that women-only transport is offering several disadvantages to women and is not addressing the real issue. They argue that separating men, women from men during travel is a form of gender discrimination. It is only causing women to avoid being abused rather than stopping men from committing the crime. It also doesn't stop men for, from harassing women um, at bus stops or on the subway or train platforms. Another disadvantage is um, not all females have access to these designated car uh, carriages um, due to high demand for them, especially during peak rush hour times, so those women are still vulnerable. But even female activist Marie Marcel Fiecra admits that this form of travel is currently the only solution available to keep women safe during public travel. Even though women-only public transport is a controversial topic, it's obvious to see the need for this mode of transit. Because when it is implemented in countries around the world, it, there is a great demand for it. So I've only provided a few examples of why females throughout this wor the world are in need of separate public transport to ensure their safety while traveling. Several countries throughout the world have successfully incorporated female-only transport in an attempt to help reduce the number of female assaults occurring on this form of, of travel. Numerous countries have successfully introduced and implemented women-only transport to their trains, subways, buses, and even taxis. Because women are frequent victims of sexual harassment and assault on public transit systems, there is a crucial need for this form of transport. This unique form of transport has created some controversy, but it seems to as though there is currently no better solution to guarantee the safety of females during their commute. Unfortunately, due to the world we live in, we are not always guaranteed safety while we travel in public. There are several benefits for women associated with all-female public transportation. The benefits associated with this form greatly outweigh the disadvantages. Until we can create a safer society for women to exist in, women-only public transportation is the best option to ensure the safety of the female passenger. Thank you for listening.